Folks, one quick thing before we get into the warm-up. Um, Nicole asked me a great question about the first day of class. Remember what she asked me, Nicole? You did the thing I supposed to type up. And then boom. So we spent method one, method two that first day figuring out what our favorite method to solve proportions are. You probably use one of them on this warm up, I would imagine. I'm guessing if you try to figure out the eights. There it is again. I just want to let you know where that is online. I, I, I'll post something. I don't put a whole lot in Blackboard. Uh, I don't like Blackboard that much because it doesn't work really well, also. Um, I'm still pissed at it, actually, because I left every one of you a comment on your journal last week, and I'm pretty sure none of you can see it. Yeah, exactly. So that's because when I have, so if you look at my end in Blackboard, I see the question I asked you, and then there's a bunch of boxes underneath. I just typed in the first box. It says it says feedback. I, I like, didn't check for all checking. Email. You should. The thing about it. Oh, okay, that's fine. I appreciate that, Jen. If you don't mind, it should be easy for you to see it. Like if you go and look at it, it should be easy that you see feedback that I left. So I'm gonna try a different box this week. We're gonna see if that works. But I do leave you feedback. Oh, you did see it, Larry. Oh, maybe, okay, maybe, okay. Okay. Anybody else, be, is anybody else able to see it? But we're submitting it on Blackboard, correct? Oh, yeah. That's the only thing you submit on Blackboard. But I want to talk about where the type up thing that, that Nicole was asking me about was. So, remember my website? There, there's me, my stupid little face from when I was much younger. Um, just right here, online course information, and then right here, the proportion solving methods we did in class. Just that link up top. When you click on that, my friends, it'll pop up into a little document. There it is, and I give you a little walk, and then I walk you through our methods. I give you some visuals to help. It's kind of like a mini textbook chapter, if you if you will. Wait, how did you do that? I clicked. No. <laughs> so go to the website first. Go to here. This is my website from the from the syllabus. Yep, online course information. I put stuff here very often. This way, anybody can get to it any time. Like if you're in Math 98 and you need to come back here and look for something, it's there waiting for you too. So, cool. All right. Yeah, the stuff will definitely go here. Um, yeah, and we'll come back to this page in class quite a bit too. Not today. Well, maybe today. We'll see. We'll see how today goes. So it might be back here. All right. All right, let's chat turtles. Let's chat turtles. Because pretty much I asked you two questions on this. I asked you two questions on this warm up. All right, five things you should know about Olive Ridley sea turtles. One out of every thousand babies will survive to adulthood. This is one of those things that um, our son, it drives our son crazy whenever he sees a baby animal dead. Um, I remember the one time years ago, he was very young, one and a half, maybe to just walking around and we were, we were at a zoo somewhere and there was like a pond that wasn't part of the zoo but there was like a family of ducks in the pond. There was a mama duck and like a dad, a, dad, a dad duck and there was a bunch of babies like in a row behind the mom and they were swimming across the pond and there was a great blue heron, one of those big birds that fishes Aww. with its beak and it was standing dead still and the duck swam right by it, didn't realize it was there I think and it picked off the last baby. Like it literally grabbed it and swung it up, and I didn't have even have time to yell and went whoop, whoop, and swallow it whole. And Max was mortified, and I'm like, buddy, let's let's talk about why animals like that have lots of babies now. And we literally had this great talk about why animals have lots of babies. It's for reasons like this, because yeah. not many of them will actually make. It. Humans are like one of those weird creatures where most of our babies make it, right? It's a, that's weird in the animal kingdom. Most of the time, fish lay hundreds if not thousands of eggs because maybe one makes it, or two make it, or three make it, you know? They, so they, they just lay thousands, hundreds, thousands, sometimes millions, depending on the creature of eggs, so that hopefully a couple make it through. And turtles are one of those exceptions. When they hatch, it's, it's hilarious and also sometimes heartbreaking. You see all these turtles hatch out of the, out of the ground, and then go running to the, the beach, and sometimes the first thing they see is a pelican comes with them up. But that's okay, because there's like thousands of them hitting the ocean, and maybe the smartest and fastest ones will make it and carry the species on. So anyway, that's why we do some of the work we do. Actually, most of the reason we do the work we do is because poachers try to take them and screw those guys. So anyway, uh, one out of every thousand baby sea turtles will survive to adulthood. Okay, on the back is the first question. Each of those turtles that died in that net. Remember, there were 300. If you read this little article, there were 300 that were netted illegally. Each of those 300 were one of the ones that made it. So remember back to the beginning, the one in 1,000. 
So one in a thousand, one makes it out of a thousand babies. So the 300 that made it, how many actual babies had to have gone to sea to allow 300 to make it? 300,000. And how did we do that? I love that answer. It's 300,000. How did we do that? Talk to me, Ellie. I just times 1,000 by 300. Why did you do that? It's a proportion. Oh, I that Number of babies that make it. <laughs> that make it. Oh, it's a ratio, actually. Over total, num total number of babies. So in the wild, scientists think that one baby makes it out of a thousand hatch. A thousand that hatch. Fair? Out of a thousand that hatch. That ratio holds constant so that if we knew, if we knew that 300 babies had made it, how many turtles had to hatch to make that happen? And now you can see, good morning! Now you can see. It's a method two problem, isn't it? Is it a four method one? How many did method two or method one? Method, method two? Method one. You just went like from here to here. Oh, that's totally fine. Yeah, actually, this is so nice. You can do it either way, can't you? You can just I go one times. You can totally do it either way. It's, it's a nice one. It's got nice numbers. So one times 300 goes to 300. So 1,000 times 300 goes to 300,000. Yeah, 300,000. 300,000. Left the beach as little baby turtles. Left the beach as little baby turtles. Little tiny things flopping along. Matisse, go ahead. What you said? Oh, little baby turtles. Left the beach as little baby turtles, yeah. They're about that big. They are ridiculously cute. And it's amazing, too. They have this, like, built-in radar. Like, if you put them on the ground, they will turn to the ocean. Even if you're not near the ocean. Like, the, the nursery, we actually dig them up and take them off the beach for a couple reasons. One is the poachers. But secondly, is also because um, the beach gets too hot sometimes in the summer. The turtles haven't figured out how to combat that yet. Um, the beach is getting hotter each year, and they're, they're not evolving quick enough to deal with that. So we actually dig them up, build perfect nests in um, styrofoam coolers, and then incubate them for 45 days. And then when they hatch, take them back out to the beach and let them back into the ocean. And, uh, but the ones that, ha that hatch naturally, they pop out of the ground. It's, it's freaking hilarious. You're like, sometimes you're laying on the beach, like in the middle of the day, and you hear this little <laughs> next to you, you look over, baby turtle pops out, just flaps its wings, and then hits the, and starts running. And hopefully it makes it before a crab gets it or a seagull gets it or something. But even if they hatch way off the beach, way back in the nursery, you put the, the container on the ground and start taking them out of the container. We put them in little, um, like, uh, colanders to carry them out of the beach. That way the sand can't fall up and you can rinse them off a little bit. And uh, if you put them on the ground, like if you're trying to move them around and put them on the ground, if you face them away from the beach, they'll literally and start walking like you little asshole. You're gonna get run by a car. So they have to cross streets, which you don't want them doing that, obviously. And uh, they got lots of predators, lots of natural predators that we're trying to, we, we can't fight that, that's, that's nature. But what's not nature are the poachers. And what's not really nature is the beach getting baked and hammered by storms that are getting more severe every year. So, okay, that makes sense? Hopefully maybe, hopefully maybe. Okay, now I said, realize something else. Not every egg that gets laid by a mama actually hatches. Only half of them do. It's all those babies that you see climbing out of the nest. There's just as many eggs that didn't make it that are down in the nest that didn't hatch for whatever reason. Or they hatch and die. Sometimes the babies come out malformed. That happens sometimes too. So, and that's, if that's the case, based on your answer to number one, how many eggs were actually laid to get to the 300 adult turtles that died in that net. I hear 600,000. Tell me how you did that. Why did you multiply by two? See, I don't even know how to do You're gonna do it the same way you did that one. We're gonna do it the exact same way. Mm. Come here. I should stay there, just look over here. Oh, Jessica, you can't see this, damn it. I'll put up the front board. So Jessica, just so you know, that red light's still on back there. Okay, good. 
Just so you know, Jessica. Ah, ah. Let me zoom in a little bit. Oh, that's the math we just did to figure out 300,000 babies that made it to the ocean. Okay, so now what we gotta do is we gotta fix the camera. Say hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> that was, they're very awake, Jessica, as you can tell. Now what we gotta do is we gotta figure out how many eggs were actually laid in total. What's the fraction that you know from nature, from that, from the scientists have told us? From that question number two, there's an important fraction there, yes? A half. A half. You see this, I think you can see it. One half. This is, this is eggs that hatch over eggs that are laid, yes? So out of every two eggs that are laid, one hatches. So if four eggs get laid, two eggs hatch. So Eight eggs, go, yes! Sorry, I'm confused, I'm just trying to talk it out. Let's do it, let's talk it out. So on the proportion, it's one half equals a thousand? It could be, but we have an easier number to use. How many turtles did we just figure out made it to the ocean from number one? <laughs> 300,000, those are the ones that hatched, right? Aren't those the ones that hatched? Does that make sense, Jenna? Oh, okay. You, you got it, right, girl? So if 300,000 hatched, we don't know how many eggs were actually laid to get that to happen, yes? But can we figure it out? Yes, we can. Now, some of you said, said times two, and now you can see why. If you do a method two on this proportion, you get two times 300,000, which is 600,000 eggs total. And that's what your question mark equals. So a lot of you just said, oh, it's times two. So what you were doing was you were doing method two in your head, which is totally rad. I just want to make sure that you realize a lot of students are like, I don't know sometimes when to divide and when to multiply. And my point is, if you go back to a proportion, you'll always know what to do because a proportion will tell you what to do. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. That way, if it's not, if, it, if the numbers aren't as simple as this. Now, um, I, this, I don't know if anybody speaks Spanish or reads Spanish down here. Does anybody know what this plaque says? I will soon send awesome. a Spanish class. Anybody, can anybody read it? I know enough Spanish and I got this read to me while I was down there. I know what it says. El, El Pueblo de San Pancho, which is the town of San Pancho, which is the town that this nursery is located in. It's mm -hmm. called San Francisco, actually, but uh, San Pancho is, San Francisco, uh, uh, St. Francis was the patron saint of animals in Roman Catholic culture. Um, you've ever seen, uh, you've probably seen a Catholic statue of a little, a little guy, usually in a garden, uh, with like a ring of hair around his head and his hands are out like this. There's usually a bird in his hand eating seed. I don't know if you've ever seen that. I grew up Catholic, so I saw it all the time. He was the patron saint of animals, which made him my favorite patron saint when I was Catholic back in the day. Um, so St. Francis, St. San Francisco, San Pancho. Frank D. Smith is the guy who runs the nursery. Poor El Premier Mil Milon, Mil I think that's Milon, but it's Million. Uh, de Tortugas Libertadas, for his first million turtles released. So think about this. He's released, a, when they put this plank up, the plaque up in 2015, they had figured out he had released a million turtles to the sea. So why does this break my heart? That's more than half of what he released dead because of one fisher person who decided not to use the right nest. And chances are, a lot of those turtles that hit the, hit the water, or the eggs that were laid, were his turtles. Because this, this fishing vessel was right off the coast of where the nursery was. It, it's heartbreaking. I mean, when Frank does all this work, and we're out there pulling nests off, and then one person decides to do the wrong thing, and this, this can happen. Now, some people say, oh, it's just a turtle, Sean. Who cares? It's turtles. Who cares about turtles? Well, it's a part of our world, right? It's a part of our world, like anything else. And the thing about it is, why are these nests outlawed? Because they catch things they're not supposed to. Would it be worse or better? It's a trick question. Would it be worse or better if it caught dolphins or pelicans or seagulls or something like that? It's a trick question. Shouldn't be catching any of those things, right? So, anyway. Good math, depressing math a little bit, or, or bull trap for that matter, right? We were the fish rescue in a couple weeks on the Deschutes. I'll never forget, two years ago, we went to the fish rescue, and we were pulling fish out. We caught, got a little baby, and I picked him up, and I kind of 
looked down at him, I put him back in the bucket and looked at him. It's like a baby brook trout. It's like, no, oh, it's too pale. And then I realized it's a baby bull trout in the Deschutes. I didn't know they were in the Deschutes, Matthias. I didn't know there were bull trout in the Deschutes. That, that's the original native trout species, right? But they've been completely, basically replaced by things we've stuffed into these rivers. And that kind of breaks my heart. Brown trout, for example, rainbow even aren't really indigenous to that river. I mean, bull trout were the first, the first trout. Not anymore. But when I saw that little dude, I'm like, well, you're a baby. I mean, somebody laid an egg that you hatched from. That's kind of exciting. We logged him and let him go. So hopefully a great blue heron doesn't get you. You're nice and pale. That should help you. You don't stick out like a rainbow. <laughs> cool. I didn't mean to depress anybody. I'm sorry. I still go down there, and I'm still going to pull eggs off the beach every chance I get. And I encourage you to do the same. Send me an email. I'll send you information about it if you ever want to get down there. <coughs> it's amazing. It's an amazing place to visit. It is so cheap to live down there. Uh, it's the only place I've ever gone to to do this kind of volunteer service work where it costs more to shop than to go out to eat every night. What? Exactly. Makes absolutely no sense. We spend more money on groceries than just let's just go get let's just go get tacos. Literally, buying tacos every night on the street is cheaper than making tacos yourself at home. It makes absolutely no sense. But hell yeah, I'll do it. Because it's some damn good tacos. <laughs> I love talking to LA people. Give me some damn warm ups! I don't want to, I want to give you I want to give you credit for these. Yes! Don't worry about it. It's okay. It's okay. You don't get a zero. You just do the warm up today. Totally fine. I didn't mean to depress anybody about this. I really I didn't mean to depress anybody. I didn't mean to be a big downer today. I just want to let you know how powerful the math you're learning can be, what it can do. Well, we got them all. We got them all. Sweet tacos are good and all, but there's been times where I went to sweet tacos. You got sick. Yeah, and you don't drink the water in San Pancho. You drink bottled water. If you drink the water, bad things happen. Bad, bad things happen. All right, thank you, friend. Yes, I totally agree with you there. Yes, yes, yes. And I understand your son's pain. With the baby animals. I'm an animal nerd myself. I love baby animals. Totally, dude. Yeah. I get it. I get it. But it's one of those things you have to learn. No. We think like mammals and not like animals sometimes. And that's the thing. Jessica, I'm going to pause this for a second.